Well, hello everyone and welcome to this week's Cumberland Roundtable. Uh, we actually had one for you last week, but we had some difficulties and when it came time to upload the video, we found that the audio was all jacked up. If you tuned in to our live stream Sunday, you got to experience some of that live until we, <laughs> we got that fixed. Uh, thankful for Matt and my boy Ben uh, was able to figure that out. And so we hope that this is, this is good. Uh, this week we are looking at Matthew 18 verses 15 through 35 and we invite you to listen along to our discussion today and whatever format you find this on if you receive this as a flock note like an email or a text or if you receive this uh, via Facebook or YouTube by all means please uh, in the comments share what your reflections are help help us grow uh, from your observations and reflections. Uh, let's see, who would like to read for us today? I'll read. Excellent. Matthew 18. You already said that, didn't you? I did. You okay. can say it again. That's no, okay. You're in charge of reading, man. You say it however you want. All right, then. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses if the member refuses to listen to them tell it to the church and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church let such a one be to you as a gentile and a tax collector truly i tell you whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven again truly I tell you if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask it will be done for you in my father by my father in heaven for where two or three are gathered in my name I am there among them and then Peter came and said to him said to Jesus Lord if another member of the church sins against me how often should I forgive as many as seven times Jesus said to, the, to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Here, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Uh, Samantha, would you pray for us this morning? Yes. Yeah. Let's pray. God, we just pray that you would fill us with your spirit as we discuss and think and share, that you would open up this passage of scripture, um, soften our hearts so that we can receive it, give us understanding, God, and make us able to forgive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, Matt, why don't you get us started today? Um, okay, I will. Can I just say, though, that uh, from a business standpoint, 
the idea of throwing somebody in jail until they can pay their debt uh-huh. is got to be the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Sure. 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 I remember as a kid even going, that don't make any sense. How no. can you ever get your money back if you throw them in jail? So, they anyway. should have to keep up with a, a puppy yeah. until they get everything paid back. Oh, there's a lot of other ways to torture people in. <laughs> no, I just think, um, you know, talking about the whole forgiveness thing, I think from a parenting standpoint, I think it's important for us to remember um, to teach our children um, that we all need for forgiveness, not only from God, but from one another. And I think that a lot of times with kids, we have a tendency, um, there's a certain aspect of when they have to ask for forgiveness, they go through this process of feeling like they're less lovable mm. because they've messed up and that kind of thing. I think it's important as a part of teaching about forgiveness um, that we talk about how we don't do anything to earn God's love, which also means we can't do anything to lose it. And I think the kids need to hear that. We don't, I don't think we, we talk about that near as much. Uh, I mean, as a parent, I don't know that I did with my, with my mm-hmm. boys. Um, we talk about love and forgiveness, but not to the extent of, you know, no matter how bad you mess up, mess up God's not going to stop loving you. Um, and I think that's just really important for our kids to, to hear. Um, I think children need to know that uh, forgiveness and mercy is not just a choice. It's a necessity to being a Christian and living a Christian life. Um, it is a choice, I guess. We have the choice to forgive, but from God's perspective, it's something that we need to do. It is a part of our identity as Christians. It is. It is. It is very much so. And I think that. Uh, you know, helping children understand that there's a necessity for that, and not it be just, hey, tell your brother I said you said you're sorry, uh-huh. but going into a little more in depth with why you need to tell your brother you're sorry and why that's important and that kind of thing. And I think a lot of times we just get caught up into, hey, say you're sorry, say right. you're sorry, and we don't expand upon that. We meet, we miss those teachable moments uh, with our kids. So okay, okay, Samantha. Uh, I'm trying to sort out some thoughts on the (laughs) poor business plan, so come back to me later on that, maybe. Um, But I noticed two things. One of them, I I feel like a broken record because I'm always talking about identity, but that's what young people are doing is sorting all that out for themselves. And I think particularly the parable um, speaks to who we are, like we are forgiven. We are a people who are forgiven by God. Therefore, we must be forgiving. Mm -hmm. Um, Like forgiven is who we are and is what we're called to live out. Uh, So I think that's an important message for teenagers. But uh, when I look at the verses 15 through 20, um, my my Bible heads it reproving another who sins. Um, I just think we don't do that very well. I don't think we model it. I don't think we teach it. And in fact, I was saying that we're doing uh, in Thrive, we've been doing communication skills. And um, tonight it's on learning how to like kind of heartfelt and appropriately apologize. Uh, When we had it last, well, not last week, because it was Ash Wednesday, two weeks ago, um, it was like kind of not really de-escalation, but kind of conflict management. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's kind of ironic that we would teach that as a life skill when actually Jesus tells us, <laughs> Jesus instructs us on conflict management, but it, mm. uh, it like feels better if I'm upset with you to talk about it with you, you know, like it makes me feel better because mm. maybe you agree with me or maybe you say like, yes. Sometimes Matt's a real jerk, or you know, so we we feel better. You heard it here first, folks. Sometimes Matt is a real jerk. Um, what what I think kind of ties a thought that I have tying the both of your reflections together. Um, we don't we don't always do a good job of teaching this, or we're, we're not good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we're not good at it because we don't teach it. But also, I don't think our culture, <laughs> our culture doesn't really value yeah. it very much. Right. No, I think you're right. You know, 
uh, so much of who we are in the West and who we are as Americans is, um, and we, we don't understand, well, that's a really interesting rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we don't understand what we mean when we say we have rights. We, we throw around that we yeah. have rights to things mm -hmm. like, you can't tell me what, the, so it's a, it's a pride thing that a part of our culture is to set us up where if you try to call me out on something, even out of love, even out of genuine concern for, uh, for me or for our relationship or for my job or for whatever, like I think that most Americans, um, Puff up! Mm -hmm. How dare you? Who are you? Mm -hmm. This is my business. Even and we're quick to defend ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I feel whatever. I do whatever I want. That's, I have a right, right? You know. And mm -hmm. I think that that's that's one of those things where the church is probably not doing a very good job of engaging with culture to help shape that. Because we we don't possess enough humility to hear. You know, like I don't know if you tell me something some way that I've offended you or whatever, I have to be like tender enough to receive that. Sure. sure. Even if I my even if my inclination is to kind of puff back up or defend myself or whatever. Right. Well when you, I when you I talk about all the time, you're always talking about, hey, when you when you're thinking about something, you gotta take your head off sure. and replace it with the other person's head. And I think we need to do that sometimes when we approach people sure. that have offended sure. us, that we need to, to, to put ourselves in their shoes how they might feel when we approach them, I think, you know. Well, so I feel like I do that. And it is the most non-gratifying thing <laughs> to do that and then to go and try to engage with folks, keeping that all, like, giving it the good old college try and still coming out of it with them being so defensive. Like, I don't know that, like, I get, what I'm saying is, is I get the taking the easier route of, triangulation mm -hmm. i've got a problem with um with matt so i'm going to talk a to jerk. victor about you know yeah matt because he can be a Chip. jerk sometimes <laughs> so i talk with victor about matt and it's a way of me processing trying to get some validation you know mm -hmm. from somebody else to say well yeah the way you're feeling isn't unfounded matt can be difficult sometimes or whatever but it doesn't address anything and it sure doesn't have any concern for matt at all when I do this triangulation, it's really all about me, and there's no there's no humility involved Absolutely. because there's no care for Matt. It's all about soothing me or whatever. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, because the first day, say Samantha goes to Matt and tells Matt, "You have hurt me," because blah 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 uh -huh. blah blah blah. Uh -huh. And oftentimes, our our first thing is, "Well, I didn't do that." That's not what I meant to do. I didn't that's, mean to. I didn't, that's yeah, not I what I said. Yeah. I can't tell you because I said it to like, my wife. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. I am so sorry that I've hurt you. Mm -hmm. That I mean, that's mm -hmm. I, that should be our yeah. response. Is like, yeah. I in no way meant to do that, but I, uh, I'm sorry. obviously I've done it, and I'm mm -hmm. sorry, and I will try to work. That's a great communication. Is is they could first of all, like you say, put her head on your head. Right. Which is I call it the bobblehead technique. <laughs> bobblehead. Yeah. Yeah. Trademark. <laughs> and what what gets me? I mean, you you were talking about the world, um, and how like out in the world it is it, a uh, we just don't do that. Right. We're, we're not good at it. And and I feel like those worldly ways have crept into oh, the sure. church because Absolutely, think yeah. think about this. How many times have people left the church because they were mad? Hmm. Oh, a lot. Hmm. There are times we don't even know why they're mad. Sure. I mean, sure. sometimes they'll storm out of a meeting or storm, like, wait a minute. What has happened here? And it's because we don't practice. Sure. Or later on, you go to talk to them, and they're like, it wasn't anything, it was nothing you did. Sure. It's well, obviously you, somebody did something. It's me, <laughs> right? Well, there was some. So it makes me think of two things. One is a little bit of confession time. Like I am, I acknowledge when, when I came to work here, one of the first things I did was express to the session at the time. I said, "Look, if the time ever comes where we are at some genuine impasse, 
where y'all are all kind of in agreement on something and you're trying to relate that to me and I'm just not hearing it, if I'm coming back defensive or I'm – or and defensive looks like a lot of different ways. Sometimes defensive is um, – I just can't do that right now. Like avoidance, sometimes it's, well, let me over explain it. So, because if you just really knew what I was thinking when I said or did this thing, you wouldn't feel or think the way that you think or feel because I can explain it to you and make me right, that sort of thing. I said, because I know that I have tendencies and I'm very gifted at doing that, I also know that that's not the kind of relationship that I want to have with the leadership of this church. That's not who I want to be here. But I'm admitting that this is a, a fault that I have. So, here are some names of three people that I think I will listen to. And here's their contact information. And if you call them and you tell them the story, what's going on, and have them call me and they slap me around and go, Corey, what the hell are you doing? You need to listen to this. Like, you're, you're missing this because you're being prideful or whatever. Then that was like a way of me providing a tool to a, a, accommodate my mm -hmm. weakness mm -hmm. and I really wish that other people would do that <laughs> but, but that requires a certain level of self-awareness that yeah. not all of us possess you know mm -hmm. like sure. you have to recognize this is where my stubbornness kicks in sure. but this is this is who can wade through that mm -hmm. and, and make me see you know I'll, I will hear it from these voices if I'm not hearing it from yeah. you yet yeah. um, the the other thing is I can't believe you put Peggy in that position. Uh, no, I did not. I did not. <laughs> Peggy sometimes has to make the call and have them call me and go like, well, Peggy said, and I'm like, crap, I'm sorry, Peggy. <laughs> now, um, the, uh, I want you all to know that we take very seriously in the way that we treat each other as staff and in the training that we've done, uh, leadership training over the last uh, four or five years with our elders and with our deacons is triangulation um, coming to talk on the side about problems with people or situations is not acceptable. It's a big X. That's a big <laughs> X. And that's not, uh, when y'all got here, the first staff meeting we had, that was the first thing I led with. We do not do that because that kills relationships. It kills mm -hmm. community. It kills the church. It absolutely stymies the Holy Spirit and gets in the way. And it's something that we, we just cannot allow here, which means... Well, Corey said, blah, 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 painting this picture of this problem that I have with Corey. And it doesn't matter if it's kind the way that it's done. It doesn't matter if it's aggressive. If the problem is with Corey, we go talk to Corey. Which means also, if an elder or a deacon or anyone else in the church comes up and says, well, people are saying, I, who? Name names. Let's get them involved. Well, I don't know that they're comfortable with that. Well, then we can't discuss this because you and I both know that 99.9999999999% of the time, people are saying is a guarded way to give credit to, I'm not happy with this. I'm saying this, but I don't have the, um, the wherewithal to bolster it and just say, this is how I feel, so I'm going to act like a bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's very erroneous. We don't do that. So if you, I just want you to know, if you come to us and you do that, and we kick back and go, who, let's go talk to them too, because I'm not, I want to not have to explain it or deal with it seven times, you know, and I, and I don't trust that another person that I've engaged with in meaningful conversation can carry my thoughts and responses back to a mass of, you see what I'm saying? Like if I'm, if, if I'm the one that's, that's at issue here, then I'm the one that gets to represent myself in that, just like you should be able to. It is kind of what Jesus is advocating for here. Jesus doesn't say in the church, if somebody wrongs you, go tell the pastor that somebody has wronged you. Right. Like, Jesus says, go talk to them. And if that does not work, get another couple of people. So it's not that it's all in secret. I mean, right. you're involving other people. Sure. And Jesus is saying that's okay, but you're not doing it in a back room you know, or yeah. in a private text message or whatever. Right. Like. I would say on the flip side of that, if we ask ourselves, are we approachable? Mm -hmm. Are we able to, to receive the individual that will come talk to us? Because oftentimes people may not come and talk to us because they know that we can't handle something that we've done or, sure. or whatever. And... And so they just will stop, and, and which just makes for a 
Sure. A lot bigger mess. Sure. Yeah. So. I can I can admit that if you talk about confession time, uh, there was a point in time in Carol and I's relationship. Every time that she would come with me, come to me with something, I would jump in and try to explain it. No, no, this is what I. And she would just be like, she got so frustrated with me, you know. And and that is our natural tendency, I think. Mm-hmm. And, and it's easy for us, uh, almost like that human nature. Um, to want to help them see this is what I was trying to say, even though that's not what I said right. uh, necessarily or whatever. It took me a long time to get to a point where I had to mm, learn to bite my tongue mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whenever she would start asking me about something in particular or whatever. And so I think that you're right, that whole concept of approachability, um, it, it's tough. That's a good word. That's a good. It's a real good word. Yeah. What about you, Victor? What have you got from missions and outreach point of view on our text today? Y'all done it all. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I like to talk sometimes. Really? We had no issue. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Speaking of self-aware. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the whole forgiveness thing. Seeing it is not a suggestion. I mean, it, it's a command by Jesus, just like Jesus commands us to love, he commands us to forgive. And um, it's very difficult to do. I mean, as Corey talked about in the sermon, it's it's hard. It's very, I mean, like, it's sure. just, especially if you've been hurt really bad, um, if you've experienced if you're someone who's who's been abused or someone that has been wronged big time, whether it be relationships, relationships business, yes, school, yes, financial, being wronged publicly. Oh yeah, and that's like, it is huge too. <laughs> so, and to hear this whole thing about forgiveness, um, oftentimes we think that we're we're giving that person a pass. If I'm going to forgive Matt for being a jerk, right. then I'm going to give him a pass, you know, at being a jerk. And that's not the case at all. Um, a lot of times people think that, you know, if I'm going to forgive someone of something, if they, they've abused me and I've forgiven them, it, it's like saying, it's okay. Right. It's okay. That's not the case at all. Um, uh, God doesn't call us to be a doormat. Uh, doesn't call us to be abused. He did, I mean, He doesn't want us to live that way, um, work in that way, or, or anything else. Uh, no, to forgive someone is to tell someone it's not okay. What you have done to me is not okay. Well, God doesn't forgive us and then say sin's okay. I mean, yeah. exactly, exactly, yeah. and. Um, and he gives the example if another member of the church sins against you and he goes all through that, all that, but but it's going to another member of the church and said, okay, I need you to go with me. After you have approached someone, it's like, no, this is real. You've done this. Mm-hmm. You have done this, and it's not okay. Well, if that doesn't work, keep on. And uh, then Peter pipes up with, oh, all right, then how many times? I mean, where's the limit? Yeah. How where can we this? where can we draw that line in the sand? When am I free to not have to forgive them anymore? When am I yeah. off the hook for yeah. the forgiveness? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, people say, "Okay, seventy-seven times." Well, let's start counting. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Basically, I feel like Jesus is saying here, "Quit counting." Jesus makes hand symbol. Yeah, <laughs> infinity symbol. <laughs> yeah. Quit, quit counting. Um, because if you're counting, that's really an indicator yeah. that mm-hmm. you're you're doing it you're, for the count. You're doing it for the count. <laughs> you're really not maybe paying attention, engaging what's yeah. actually happened here. The, the honest thing is is to forgive someone is basically to unbind yourself from. I mean, what does Jesus say here? Binding and loosing. Yeah, yeah. you, yeah. you bind you on earth. Bound what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That that is key to this text and it's key to the um, even the parable is you're unbinding yourself of the evil that has happened to you of the wrong that has happened to you um, how many of us are living a life uh, where we think every day 
about a wrong that has happened to us? How many of us are imprisoned by the hurt that someone has done to us in the past? And forgiveness is, is, is unbinding yourself to that. It, it's actually it's, it's, uh, an act of faithfulness to God. God who continues to overcome evil. God who continues to, uh, to forgive and, and all the, the wrong things that I've done, all the things that um, God, God forgives and loves. And, and when we forgive, then that act of faithfulness helps us to uh, stand. I mean, it's a defiant stance against evil. Yeah. It's a defiant stance. It's like, I'm not letting this overcome me. Because we know that good overcomes evil and, and light overcomes darkness. I think maybe sometimes, maybe, maybe more than sometimes, maybe pretty often, what the issue becomes for me is uh, you hear a lot of justice language now. That kind of parlance in our, mm -hmm. in our culture is uh, both sacred and secular is very common uh, a sense of, of of justice for people that have been wronged uh, and I think that part of my humility is I have to say for Corey I'm not speaking against other things that are systematic and are blatantly obviously justice issues mm -hmm. but when I feel that righteous indignation and that demand it's this that's happened to be me be made right mm -hmm. I will often I think, and I think other people do too, couch that desire and that, that those feels that we get toward that as a justice issue. That I was wrong. This needs to be made right somehow, right? Uh, and I think that the problem with me is, one, I can't be trusted for my own justice seeking, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, in this scenario, when I forgive someone, if there's any restitution or justice that needs to be made, I'm trusting the community, I'm trusting that person, and I'm trusting that whatever God has in plan will handle those things. Because if I go seek out justice for myself, it probably isn't even really going to be justice. You know what I'm saying? It won't be justice in the eyes of other people. Well, I think we use that term in a very vague way because, well, what we think might be justice. Well, I'm saying... Somebody if, else it, may if, not. It, if I'm all in my feels from being hurt or being embarrassed or whatever, if if I go after it to demand it, to, to wrestle it from someone or tit for tat, you did this to me, mm -hmm. it's only right if I do it yep. to you, then yeah, that's not justice. That's not justice. Mm -hmm. And I can't be trusted to know where that line is. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I also think that... I think we can waller in it sometimes. I think that we can play the victim card for ourselves and we would rather live in the sin and brokenness. And I'm not saying that whatever, I'm not saying we're not victims, but I'm saying we're, we can sometimes be more in love with being a victim than we are with being delivered by Christ and made something new. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a very sad thing. And unfortunately, I believe that I see that an awful lot. And look at your social media. And I'm not saying like like celebrities and influencers that you follow or whatever. I'm saying like the people in your world, how quick they are to look at what was done to me. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all should never ever go to this restaurant ever again because this bad thing happened. Okay, well, sometimes you have a bad experience at a restaurant. You don't know all the variables that are there. You should never ever be a part of this church because of this experience that I had. When somebody asks me to move out of their pew, like, that's not the whole of that congregation. That's not right. the whole of the life yeah. of that church. Yeah. But, you, but we, we yeah. blast it, and there's, an, there's a, the opposite of humility. There's a pride, and we're indignant about that, which mm -hmm. makes when we, that's the opposite of what's being said here, mm -hmm. you know? And even, even the part about taking someone to go visit with a person that you believe is wrong to you, mm -hmm. there is the chance with this third party that they hear this out and then they go, 
Corey, they didn't do you wrong. You don't like it, but there was nothing wrong about this. And I think the key to that is that uh, you talked about no triangulation. So if Samantha has an issue with me because I'm a jerk, and she comes and talks to me, and I'm like, I'm you not You heard a jerk. it here from I'm the lion's mouth. That's right. He is. And then she goes and gets the two of you. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need to tell you ahead of time what that conversation is going to be about. To not, to not, you yeah, to not to warp yeah. your, your, yeah. your viewpoint of it in that kind of mentality. And I think yeah. that's where that becomes very difficult because, you know. Now we got a posse. Yes. <laughs> now, now the, the, I'm going to pitchforks and torches. I'm, gonna, I'm, a, I'm immediately going to become defensive when I see three people coming towards me. You know, uh, I think, so that's kind of one of those things that's the difficult to, to do because if Samantha comes to me and says, Hey, I need you to go talk to Corey with me about something. I'll be like, what's going on? She's like, I, just, uh, you'll see. yeah. And that's, that's hard. That is I, hard. I mean, it's happened here to me in this church where I, I was asked to come into the senior pastor's office and there was a church member that wanted to tell us something. And I'm sitting there going, what's going on? Right. And the senior pastor didn't know either. And we right. were all just like, you know, and, and it was, I mean, but that not knowing ahead of time, sure. that feeling mm -hmm. like you're not prepared. And I think that that's sometimes the but again that place to our disadvantage. Uh, part of that is the, our insecurities brought right. up out of fear, because what you're experiencing in that scenario is the exception and not the cultural rule. We are used to if we get called into something or invite. You could be invited to get be something. It, there's nothing about it that's supposed to be about you except for you to come and bear witness. Then you get in the meeting and you turn out that everybody else is there to beat you up. So even the way that it was sold to you mm -hmm. to come and experience wasn't really, so we are more used to that mm -hmm. than we are the, the humble and accountable way mm -hmm. that Jesus is outlining here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of discernment that has to be involved in all of this, uh, of, of going to get that person to, to go, to, or to have the conversation first. It's like discerning when, when is the good time to, to do this. Or and even, discerning, first of all, did they really do me wrong? Sure. To ask that and ask that over and over is like, I, I, Cause, yes. Because can we be clear? Like, I just want to be really explicit here. You can experience something in, in relationship with someone that you don't like. Mm -hmm. You don't like the way it makes you feel. You don't like the way that it makes you think. But it doesn't make the other person evil or wrong. Exactly. It just yeah. means you don't like it. And people, that's okay. Don't like it. Yeah. it th that's what you speak to. I don't. I just didn't care for that. I don't like the way it makes me feel. No, dive well, into I that. Think, why? Why I do you think not like that? Discernment is really important too, mm -hmm. from a standpoint of, you know, you talked about. You told the session that here are three people that I'm willing to listen to. So if Samantha comes to me and I I deny it, she needs to think about who is Matt going to possibly listen to. That's who I need to go and bring into this environment yeah, too. Not yeah. not one of her buddies that's going to back her right away kind of mentality, I right. think. And so I think, you know, when we get to that point, thinking about keeping that other person in mind, who's going to be influential yeah. in them? You and know, don't go get a yes person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, don't yeah. go get that person yeah. that, that every time you talk to them, they agree with everything you say. They, you know, they will say what you want to hear. It's like, mm. yeah, yeah, that's you stacking a situation. Yeah. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a type of manipulation that is specifically what's mm -hmm. being forbidden here. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And that's the legalist kind of way that it's a pharisaical way that the church would like to handle it. Look, I took two people from the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you took your you can't take you your took, wife and your brother. Yes, gonna say you took your dad and your son. What? Well, you know. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you really want to be, you know, take somebody you're pretty sure doesn't like you. Yeah. You know. Well, thank you all so much. I think this has been a a, a fruitful conversation. I hope you found it to be so. And again. Uh, as you reflect on our time here together or your personal reflections from dealing with the scripture on your own, please share it with us. We'd love to hear it. Absolutely. Uh, and until next time, go in peace. Peace. Bye.